Hi dear cricket friends and subscribers of uh, Cricket Happenings, your host Ram here with your daily edition of the Cricket Happening Show. Uh, well, uh, not much. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cover some cricket news uh, and this is between India and West Indies. As you know, tomorrow uh, India and West Indies are actually clashing uh, in the fifth and final one day international which will bring an end to this uh, one day series. And there is uh, still no um, no news of uh, Chris Gale into the team. Uh, tomorrow is the final game uh, of the five one-day international series between India and West Indies, which will be played at Kingston in Jamaica. And well, uh, as far as West Indies are concerned, what West Indies have done is they made two changes in the team. As I said, there is no still there is no news of uh, any Gale in the team. So Chris Gale is still continuing uh, was con uh, completely out of this uh, particular series. But one good thing is happening is that West Indies are bringing back Adrian Barat, who actually missed the World Cup. Uh, and you know what an exciting find he is. You remember that century against uh, Australia. He's a very, very young batsman, uh, young player in a sense. He's very short, but he has a lot of strokes under his repertoire. And uh, also, uh, in my opinion, Adrian Barat has a great future for West Indies for sure. Uh, he will definitely strengthen that opening slot for them, which has looked shaky in this series so far, uh, barring at the 56 run start that he got in the uh, fourth, uh, I think it was the third one day national. Kirk Edwards is out, and in comes uh, Adrian Barath. And uh, the other uh, news, uh, Ram Paul uh, is uh, back into the team. So uh, Ravi Ram Paul uh, comes back uh, into the uh, team. So as you know, now West Indies will definitely be looking to. Um, uh, actually, you know, uh, get that uh, adrenaline going with Ram Paul coming to them because uh, they have already won the uh, f f I mean, fourth one-day international in a very convincing fashion. For India, they would their their um, uh, main focus would be that they would have the same team and try to get a win. I can probably do a sh short uh, preview there uh, for West Indies. Well, uh, uh, just uh, looking at the preview of the uh, fifth one-day international here, I would say. Um, uh, for them, uh, there have been a lot of positives like uh, Kiran Pollard, you saw the other day, he came into some good form. Andre Russell has been doing well with the bat now. Uh, Marlon Samuels uh, probably can show a lot more consistent. Darren Bravo is the one uh, which is a question mark. Now, he needs to get a big one tomorrow. Adrian Barath, well, he would definitely be raring to go. Uh, Darren Sammy always leads by example. I always like the look of Darren Sammy. He's very, very aggressive and he likes to go with the game. He game brings that West Indies feel to the game. Uh, Carlton Bog, the wicketkeeper, has been playing some two consistent knocks uh, over the past two one-day one days. But uh, one refreshing thing which is happening for West Indies, as I said, is the right arm leg spin bowling. Anthony Martin took 4 for 36 the other day. Devendra Bishu is looking promising. So uh, spin is probably uh, slowly wending its way down into the West Indies team here because, as you know, they are always dominated with pace. Uh, probably this is the time when the spin is going to rule the roost, probably. And then uh, we have Kemar Roche, who bowled very well. Um, and then Sarwan, um, also Lendi Simmons is in some good uh, nick here. Uh, so this is as for the Western system. For India, well, it's very high time. Uh, Badrinath actually uh, gets a good knock tomorrow. So probably there will be a real acid test for Badrinath tomorrow to get a good knock because uh, that's the... I mean, that would really enable him to actually come in, into the test matches. Manoj Tiwari will uh, get a chance. Manoj Tiwari really struggled with the bat there. He bowled, but uh, he was not so impressive. Uh, and uh, the other thing, Ishan Sharma, the other day, leaked a lot of runs, 60 runs. So he would like to put up a much improved performance there. Uh, and um, uh, for India, well, with this team, they would like to win it and uh, do something about it. But for West Indies, uh, they, they are not only salvaged by winning the uh, the fourth one-day international, but the fifth one-day international will be something like uh, they would like to, you know, make this uh, uh, series even Stevens. Uh, that's what they would like to do by getting the win under the belt. And for India, the other thing, uh, Virat Kohli probably uh, needs to put up a good score there. Uh, and the opening, Pratik Patel has been consistent, but he has not been able to go to a big one. So that would be something that India would like. Uh, and uh, well, Suresh Rana himself, the captain, uh, has to really get a big knock and stay there at the crease and, you know, probably a century or so. Uh, and the uh, spinners, they have been doing a good job. Amit Mishra came in for some tap the other day with Kiran Parod. So he would like to really, uh, you know, uh, get things right here. Um, and uh, the other thing, uh, well, there's nothing else that I could really talk about. Uh, but I think we are in for a good match because still it's a tough contest because India with the reserve talent would like to get another win 
uh, and probably make it 4-1 but West Indies on the other hand would like to make this series even by actually winning the uh, the fifth one day international at Kingston in Jamaica so that happens tomorrow uh, now I'm going to do a quick roundup of the English county uh, scene here in English county cricket as you know the 2020 um, uh, tournament is going on uh, this is the French live T20 in the north group there was uh, Durham versus Nottinghamshire which was played at the Riverside ground Chesterley Street um, and I would just like to talk about that game well the verdict was Dur Durham actually beat Nottinghamshire by 33 runs for Durham, they had uh, of the top of the order, uh, Phil Mustard uh, made uh, 75 of just 41 delivers, 11 fours and 2 sixes. Uh, Ian Blackwell contributed 43 of 27 balls with 4 fours and 1 six. Other than that, uh, it was um, Miller, uh, David Miller made 19. 187 for 8 uh, was what uh, Durham made after batting first. Uh, bowling, well, Pattinson had 4 overs, 3 for 31 from the Nottinghamshire side. And Nottinghamshire contra made 154. Uh, some good contributions coming from Hales, who has been looking impressive of 26 of 15 balls, 4 fours and 1 six. Uh, Vessels was run out for 32 of 30 balls with 3 fours. And 46 scored by Adam Woods, uh, the Australian, of 26 balls, 7 fours. And a quick 28 from Mulani. 28 of 24 balls with 2 four. So they, they finished at 154 for 8. So they finished short by 33 runs. Uh, as far as the bowling was concerned, it was Rashford who had 3 for 20 and 2 wickets apiece to Ian Blackwell and uh, Gareth Brees. Now, the next match that I'm looking out is the match between Middlesex versus Glamorgan. And Glamorgan actually won this match by uh, 4 wickets uh, over here. Uh, Middlesex were the ones who first batted uh, for them. Chris Rogers made 30 of 21 balls with 4 fours and Dal Rimple just 10 runs. So it was not a good performance for Middlesex. They were uh, bowled out for 102. Uh, the architect there, uh, uh, Robert Croft, the spinner, 4 overs, off spinner, 4 overs, no made in 3 for 18 and 3 for 11 for Dan Cosker. Uh, Glamorgan, uh, well, uh, they had it in the 18th over. They actually got to the victory mark. Uh, Alviro Peterson from South Africa, 39 of 32 balls with 6 fours and Wallace making 40 of 41 balls with 2 fours and winning the match. Uh, there was three wickets for seven for Ryan McLaren and two for 26 for Dexter. Uh, the other match that I will look at is the South Group which was uh, played between uh, Sussex and Somerset. Sussex uh, beat Somerset by four wickets. Uh, for them it was um, uh, in fact uh, Kisbita really failed there uh, but Tresco the, uh, the captain made 33 of 23 balls, two fours and three sixes and some very little contributions from the River Fund of 14, uh, 10 from Meshte and Karthik uh, Murli Karthik made 19 of 17 balls with two fours, 90 all out in fact uh, Somerset and uh, 91 for 6 was what Sussex made uh, but there was 5 wicket haul there for uh, O.P. Rayner of Sussex who bowled superbly, 4 rows no made in 5 for 18, uh, Sussex made uh, 91 for 8 so they went over the finishing line um, even though they also struggled, they lost 6 wickets in that uh, particular game uh, and there was 16 from Vincent, Goodwin made 27 of 35 balls with the highest scorer and 91 for 6 uh, well, two wickets uh, piece to Hussein and Kirby, and two wickets for Ilaf and Omar. Um, uh, so that uh, uh, that sums up my uh, cricket happening show uh, for today. I just made a round about the free French T20 Life uh, 2020 tournament being played in England and English County scene because I didn't have anything else to share. So tomorrow, watch out for the fifth Monday international between India and West Indies at Kingston in Jamaica. Uh, that's it from me, your host Ram, for the cricket happening show for today. See you all tomorrow. Thank you.